Hey there, White Sox fans. Uh, what a fun series that was against Houston. After game one went down, I think I'm not alone with the feeling of like, oh gosh, here we go again. Just getting absolutely dominated by Houston. And then just back to back, incredible outings from uh, Lucas Giolito and Carlos Rodon. Uh, the White Sox end up winning the series against Houston. And I'm supposed to be here talking about the leaderboard update, the picks to click leaderboard. Uh, and that's what I'm gonna do, but I have to acknowledge what a fun, Saturday and Sunday uh, it was. Uh, if anybody had tickets for those games, uh, you had a great time at the ballpark. So yes, we are going to look back at the last month worth of White Sox baseball that led up to the All-Star break and update all of the picks to click leaderboards. We're gonna take a look at all of the ups and downs. In the last month, uh, there was some really bad White Sox baseball and then there was some great White Sox baseball that led into the All-Star break. Uh, we will cover it all. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to go kind of fast because there's a lot to cover. Uh, but we will see all of the stats as we always do when we do a leaderboard update. A video went live on Friday, which is where you were supposed to make your picks uh, for the pick to click contest. If you didn't do that, it is too late to make your picks. Uh, however, you can still make a comment here in this video. That way, at least you can get one participation point. And we are gonna have some new fun scoring going forward and keeping your streak alive for participating week in, week out will be part of that. So yes, we are going all the way back to June 14th through 20th. And yes, yes, Monty Grandel was still playing. That's how far back we are going. The beginning of this week, the White Sox had a great high-flying series victory against the Tampa Bay Rays. Yes, Manny Grandal got a walk-off, so anybody that picked him that week got an extra point. Uh, and then the highs became lows as the White Sox traveled to Houston and got swept in four games. Overall, the White Sox were 2-5 and five on the week with a negative 18 run differential, not something we are used to seeing the White Sox do. As you see, Tim Anderson was a very highly picked player this week. Brian Goodwin, after making a big positive impression in his first little bit of White Sox baseball, got a lot of people believing in him. Even generating more votes, more picks than Juan Moncada. Leary Garcia had been doing well as well. And you see just two people, including myself, picked just Monty Grandal. Uh, just one vote for your mean Mercedes from Mark Johnson, hoping he was coming out of his slump. Zach Collins and Leary Garcia did well in their limited playing time. Ryan Vaughn did great. He was the batting average leader out of full-time players. But you also see how he went to 0-4 against Houston with people like Moncada batting just 231, Jose Abreu just 111. And yes, your mean Mercedes went 0 for the week. So spoiler alert, Mark, you did not get any points other than participation. Nobody broke double digits and hits. Brian Goodwin continued to be on a tear with three doubles. Nobody had a triple and nobody had multiple home runs. In total of bases, Vaughn led the way with Tim Anderson next and then Goodwin. On base plus slugging was a rough one. We always like to see our stars batting over 800 on this level. Vaughn was the only full-time player to do that in the mid eights. Moncada in the upper sixes, Tim Anderson mid sixes and Abreu under 400. Though Abreu didn't do great, he at least made his hits count. He led the way with four. And again, the walk to strikeout ratio is always telling. Only one White Sox player had more walks than strikeouts, and most people were really upside down. Good one under Abreu, two walks to seven strikeouts. Vaughn, two walks to eight strikeouts. Danny Mendick and Tim Anderson, one walk to seven strikeouts. It was a quiet week on the base paths with only Tim Anderson logging a stolen base. It was a very easy selection to pick Andrew Vaughn as our top offensive player. Only three of you picked him. And it was very close for who should be runner-up, so I gave it to both Tim Anderson and Brian Goodwin. So even while the White Sox had a rough week, we do have a lot of people that scored. And of course, as I mentioned, Yasmani Grandal had a walk-off hit, which earned an extra point for me and Tom. The next week, the White Sox split a two-game set against Pittsburgh in Pittsburgh. And then unfortunately went just one and two against the Mariners. And this was a week I was hoping the White Sox would get some revenge against Seattle from the opening week where the White Sox did not play that great against Seattle. And unfortunately, we did not make a positive statement. Overall, went two and three with a negative seven run differential. I think it was a down week overall for predictions. Uh, Jose Abreu and Tim Anderson led the way. Andrew Vaughn, understandably, got more attention. And of course, if I pick him, he's not going to do well. So we'll see how that plays out. Moncada got some good picks. Yasmani Grandal got some picks. And Adam Engel, even though he was already on the injured list for the second time, was picked twice. As always, if there are any injury updates, I pin that in the comments. So you should take a look at that because it was known at the time that Adam Engel was on the injured list. It does pay to watch the video and check out the comments. In very limited action, your mean Mercedes was actually very good this week. Uh, just nine plate appearances, but he batted 444. Grandal, we are used to seeing him with a very low batting average, but he hit over 300 on the week. And again, you see most of our stars didn't do great. Tim Anderson was at 286. Moncada was just 250. 
Garcia, who had some good weeks leading up to it, batted just 188, Abreu 154, and yes, my pick, Andrew Vaughn, just 083. It was a fairly light week overall for the offense, but as you see here, Grandal had two home runs and he did have a double, which helped him lead the way with 11 total bases over Tim Anderson's seven. On base plus slugging, Yaz easily led the way, nearly 1,300. Mercedes was at 1,000. Luis Gonzalez got some of his first playing time and had an on-base plus slugging of 955. But that is largely due to him having two doubles and very few at-bats. And again, that magical 800 number here was out of reach for Moncada, Tim Anderson, and Abreu, who was down in the mid-400s. Grandal easily led the way with RBIs. But you can see that the White Sox were starting to see the ball a little bit better, including Moncada, who had more walks than hits. Grandal at four of each. But Abreu just had one walk against six strikeouts, and Tim Anderson had no walks against six strikeouts. Very obviously, he has Monty Grandal with the top offensive performer this week, with, for the second week in a row, Tim Anderson and Brian Goodwin coming in tied for second. It was unfortunately a tough week for identifying really good offensive performers outside of Grandal. Next week was the beginning of a turnaround, but it was overall kind of an up-and-down week. The White Sox did sweep the Twins in three games. There was a rainout. It was supposed to be a four-game set. But then they went to Detroit and lost the series one game to two. It was during this week that Yermin Mercedes was sent down. Gavin Sheets and Jake Berger were called up. Overall, it was still at least a winning week, four and three, with a plus 13 run differential. Yasmani Grandal was a big pick this week as he was the only guy that was really performing the previous week. I think this is the fewest picks we've ever seen for Tim Anderson, just three. And as you see there, a late pick came in. I, I've been pretty relaxed about people making a pick a little bit too late, a little bit after the deadline, but one came in way late. Uh, he acknowledged it as well, so it's not a big deal. I did still want to give him his participation point. Again, my pick, I go ahead and bestowed the kiss of death on. I was not alone as Sharon Davis, ML, and Tom all picked Jermaine, who played one game and then got sent down. So that was kind of a wasted week for all of us. And look at that, only one person picked Jose Abreu this week. Easily the fewest who have ever picked him. Batting average, now that I wasn't picking Vaughn, he was leading the way hard with a 4-5-5 batting average. Berger Garcia, Abreu had turned it around, Yaz Hamilton, Tim Anderson, Gavin Sheets, everybody seemed to be batting over 300. When it comes to total hits, Vaughn led the way with 10 over Tim Anderson's 9, Abreu 7. And this is the week that Goodwin got credit for a cycle, at least as far as the entire week was concerned. He had one double, one triple, and two home runs. Really a great number of extra base hits, and you will see that reflected when we look at total bases and the on-base plus slugging. Because yes, Vaughn over 1,200, Grandal and Garcia over 1,100. Berger, Goodwin, Sheets, and Abreu over 1,000. Really a fun week when it comes to the offense. You'd think we would have won more games overall in the week, but at least the bats were coming alive. Abreu and Sheets led the way with RBIs with Yasmani right behind them. And again, overall, we start to see those ratios improve when it comes to the walks against strikeout ratio. Collins had a savvy stolen base, uh, catching everybody napping. Hamilton stole the base. Uh, Tim Anderson was thrown out in his one attempt. Oh, and as I talk about how great Andrew Vaughn did this week, nobody picked him. Uh, that would have been a very easy week for me to pick the winner. Sadly, nobody picked Vaughn, so I have to try to go down the list a little bit. And there was no clear-cut next best, so... I called it a tie between Ismani Grandal and Jose Abreu. Again, Brian Rios being the only person to still have faith in Jose, and he was rewarded for it. Going down the list a little bit more, I had to call it a tie for the runner-up as well. Goodwin and Sheets ends up with the tie for runner-up, and uh, just a handful of you picked Goodwin or Sheets, so those were some very savvy picks. And finally, that brings us to the last week before the All-Star break, and the White Sox were outstanding. They took two of three from the Twins and then swept the Orioles. Uh, this was the week that Adam Eaton was sent down and Yasmani Grandal was injured. Overall, the White Sox went 5-1 and one with a plus 23 run differential. That's what we want to see. After a hot week last week, Jose Abreu was again a very trendy pick. Vaughn Mancata as well. And bad news for Gavin Sheets, I picked him. So I apologize to Mike, Elijah, and Mr. Pasty Tacos, uh, who also uh, had to suffer the curse. <laughs> batting average-wise, Tim Anderson led the way dominantly. 455 batting average. Jake Berger, in limited time, was still tearing the cover off the ball, batting 400. Engel right behind him. We see Mancata went down below the Mendoza line. He began to struggle again. And yes, the lowest name on this totem pole is Gavin Sheets, who batted just 111 on the week. Seems like Tim Anderson almost always leads the way with total hits. It was no different this week. Leary Garcia was really outstanding this week with nine hits. And in this week, it was Leary Garcia who had the cycle for the week with one triple, one home run, and two doubles. 
with Vaughn and Engel being the only two players to have multiple home runs. But just look at how many people hit doubles. This was a great week, not just for overall hits, but for extra base hits. Seven different players had multiple doubles in this one week, while literally every single offensive player that played this week, that which is 13 players, as you see, some of the biggest numbers we've seen when it comes to total bases. 16 for Garcia, 15 for Vaughn, 13 for Tim Anderson and Adam Engel, and 12 for Abreu and Goodwin. White Sox had four players with an on-base plus slugging over 1,000. Jake Berger in the mid-900s again. Abreu was knocking at his door in the high 800s. Collins and Goodwin each in the mid-800s. Uh, Moncada below where we'd like to see him, but he was really the only star player that didn't have an exceptional week. One of the great things about this White Sox team, it's a cliche, but it's a fun cliche, uh, when it's the players that you're not expecting to lead the way or the ones that do it, the runs batted in were led by Adam Engel, Leary Garcia, and Brian Goodwin. Walks the strikeouts, Yoan has really developed his eye lately. He is continuing to walk more than he strikes out, kind of picking up where his Monte Grandal left off. Gavin Sheets has a good eye for a younger player. We like to see that. Pretty rough one for stolen bases. Adam Engel was one for two, and Tim Anderson and Vaughn were each thrown out. And this was also the week where we put some big stats, some big point values on the picks. Just playing this week, you earned three points, and we had a first, second, and third place with a tie in third place split between Jose Abreu and Jake Berger. Ja Bum being the one person to pick Jake Berger. He unfortunately had kind of limited playing time, but he really performed very well in his limited action. And of course, Jose Abreu did very well. The runner-up was Andrew Vaughn with his 1,100 on base plus slugging, 15 total bases, two doubles, and two home runs. And the top player last week, and the top player for that week was Tim Anderson, who again led the way with a 455 batting average. 10 hits, including three doubles, and led the team with seven runs scored. He really was a table setter that kicked off the rest of the offense for the White Sox. And now let's take a look. Drum roll, please. At the big update to the leaderboard, it has been a while since we've done one of these. We are up to 92 participants. Cracking 50 points is Alex Watsky. There's been some big shakeups in the top 10, uh, including me just plummeting right out of it. As you see, some players made a big jump, and I tried to point it out every time I saw it. And a point of pride and humility there, I do have to point out, my wife has passed me in the leaderboards. Uh, I was in the top three for a while, but I have just dropped out of the top ten, and uh, my wife has passed me. She picked Tim Anderson last week. It was a good pick. So there you have it. Finally caught up in the picks to click leaderboard. It is a fun way to watch the White Sox. It's kind of like fantasy baseball, except you only have to pick one person and you don't have to keep updating your lineup every single day. Uh, free to play. Just leave a comment. And I hope everybody's enjoying it. I think a lot of you are. Uh, it's been so much fun to see how many people have made a pick every single week of the season. Uh, the points in the second half are going to go up. Uh, so even if you haven't played yet, you still have a chance. And again, there's nothing to lose. It's just a fun way to watch baseball. And uh, we are still working on ways to get some prizes to the top 10 finishers. So you can win something just for watching baseball and commenting on this YouTube channel. Uh, I hope everybody is doing well. And again, I think after that wonderful White Sox win this Sunday, go Carlos Rodon. What a comeback story. He's got to be comeback player of the year, right? Uh, I hope everybody's doing great. I'll see you soon. Till I see you next. Play ball and go Sox.